chapter 1, <laughs> verse 17, it says, But beloved, remember you the words that were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you that there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust, and they shall be they who separate themselves, sensual, not having the spirit. He says, but beloved, that's you, that's me, building yourselves up on your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. He said in verse 21, he says, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And he said, and some have compassion making a difference. I always look for ways to be a blessing to people, to be kind to people, to be gracious to people. Because the very words that I have, like I said, Jesus said in John 6, 63, he said, his words are spirit and they're alive. Our words are spirit and they're alive too. And we hold the, the very words that can, that can bring eternal life to someone that we come across. And I don't take that lightly. And, you know, he says in Matthew 5, 16, to let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your God, which is in heaven. There's two things that we need to do, uh, I believe, in the last days. And number one is first walk in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Like I said in my prayer tonight, Romans 8, 16 and Romans 8, 14 says you are his child and that you are led by the Spirit and that his Spirit will bear witness with your spirit. So that whoever you come across, you can hear from him and say what he says to them. So that it will speak what? Spirit and it will speak life. Right? So when you walk in love and show mercy, you allow the Holy Spirit to release everything he is in you and through you. It's the love and the goodness of God that will make a difference in one's life, turning them to, to God in their moments of weakness. The Bible says in, in uh, uh, Romans 2.4, it says the goodness of God leads a man to repent. And all repentance means is just to turn around and go the other way. So yeah, our lives are supposed to be an expression of who he is. And like I said, we hold um, the, very, the words that, that Jesus said. We have life in us, and we hold that mercy to whoever uh, we, we meet, we, we give words of mercy, we give words of love, and we're supposed to be a vessel for him to flow through. Turn to uh, 2 Timothy chapter, chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verse 20, he said, But in the great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood of the earth, and some of honor, and some of dishonor. He said, if a man purged himself, that word purge there, uh, it's only mentioned two, to Paul, the Apostle Paul only mentions it two times in the Bible. And the other, uh, the other time it's mentioned is uh, 1 Corinthians 5, I wrote it down, 1 Corinthians 5, 7. It says, um, to purge out the old leaven. And whatever's, whatever is uh, stopping you from walking in love, walking in mercy, Purge yourself of those things. Purge out that old leaven. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. And old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. And it's just like, you know, Justin was preaching a while back on Galatians 2.20, and, and um, Galatians 2.20 says, to be crucified with Christ, it's nevertheless uh, I live, but Christ lives in me in the life which I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That word crucified means to be dead to your former thoughts, feelings, and actions, and just made alive with him. So whatever is old, purge yourself from those things. He said, if any man purge himself of these things, he shall be a what? A vessel unto honor. And all a vessel means is a holder or a receiver of something, especially something of non-material. And he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared for every good work. He said, flee youthful lusts, and follow righteousness, faith, love, and peace with them that call on the Lord with a pure heart. He said, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do only gender strife. He said, and the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, 
apt to teach and patient, in meekness and instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure, um, that he will give them to repentance, to acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who has taken them captive by his will. John 10.10 10 says, The thief only comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus came to give us life and have it in a what? Abundance. And he always, another translation about that, uh, verse 25, it says, In meekness instructing those that oppose himself, if God preadventure, he will give them over, give them to repentance, to acknowledging the truth. By any means possible, he will always make a way for you to escape. He will always make a way for you to repent and to turn around. Because why? Number one, he wants to show you his love and his mercy. He wants to be good to you. He says in uh, 2 Peter 3, 9, he says, um, it says uh, he's not slack concerning his promise. He's not willing that any man should perish, but all that would come to what? Repentance. He just wants you to turn around, turn to him. And I know I'm talking to the church, but I'm talking to the people out there in YouTube because there's people going to watch this video over and over and they're just going to say, look, you know, James was right. He was preaching the word. I I have to turn around. I have to get right with him, you know. But, you know, even in Lamentations 3, verse 22 and 23, it says, it's, um, he says, he's, uh, I just wrote it down so I don't forget. It's of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. And his compassion fails not. It says they are new every morning and great is his faithfulness. Psalms 92 verse 2, I quote this all the time. I thank you, Lord, that I remember your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night. God just wants to show his faithfulness to you. He wants to show his love to you. He wants to show his mercy to you. So so John chapter 3, let's turn to John chapter 3. He's talking to Nicodemus here. It's after Licks, I mean Luke. <laughs> Hallelujah. If any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. <laughs> if you don't have fun when you're up here, Hallelujah. Serving God is fun. Hallelujah. <laughs> Verse 5 of chapter 3, he said, Jesus answered. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. He said, that which is born of the flesh is of the flesh. He said, that which is born of the spirit is of the spirit. See, like I said, in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away and all things become new. You're born of the spirit, right? You're born of the spirit. You have the spirit of God living inside you, but there's the difference between being born of the spirit and filled with the spirit. Being filled with the Spirit is, like I said in, um, in, in Jude 120, it says, but beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. That means praying in tongues, being filled with the Holy Ghost. And, um, but there's a difference. But number one, being born of the Spirit is for you, but being filled with the Spirit is, is for others. He, uh, you know, in the Apostle Paul, even, you know, he wrote two-thirds in the New Testament but he always made a point where he would pour out his life and what God has shown him to others. And, you know, if you go to Ephesians, the prayers that he prayed over the Ephesians, and I remember Pastor Gary telling me a long time ago, he told the church this, and I caught it and I received it. He says, pray these over your life every single day, multiple times a day. And he said, watch what God will do. And I, and I prayed and prayed and prayed, and I, and I, and I, I seen God move in my life and give me revelation in his word. And um, so anyways, before I read that prayer, uh, in verse 16, go to verse 13. It says, In whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom after you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all what? All the saints. Our love that he showed, that he's given to us, that he showed upon us, is supposed to be expressed to others. And he says right here in verse 16, let's start. 
He says, I cease not to give thanks for you, making you a mention of you in my, in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. That word, riches of the glory, he mentions it only four times in the New Testament. And uh, he says, the riches of his glory of his inheritance in the saints. The other day, my mom and dad came down last Thursday. That's why I wasn't here at uh, church. But they came down, and uh, I got to spend some time with them. And, I, and I'm, always, I'm always thankful when they come down because I just want to love on them. And, uh, but anyways, they came down, and they gave me their will. They did a will up. And a will is just, it's just, a, it's just a couple pieces of paper saying, listen, this is what you're going to get when we go. It's just the inheritance. But we read what Paul said about the inheritance for us, the saints, is verse 19. He said, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? He says, in, uh, he says in Romans 8, 11, he said, the same spirit uh, that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. All that, all that he is is in you. All that he is has given you uh, as an inheritance through him. It's, it's the revelation of who God is in you. It says, let's read on. He says, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. He said, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in which is to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and also he's put all things under your feet as well. And he gave him to be the head over all things in the church, which is the body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Chapter 3, verse 14, he said, For this cause... I bow my knees unto the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, that family inheritance, the riches of his glory, to be what? Strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. He said that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. How does faith come? How does faith come? Galatians 5, 6. Faith works by what? Love. Love. He said that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you be rooted and grounded in love. When I think about, when I think about rooted and grounded, I think about when I was just, I was believing the Lord and thanking him for my new home, and I came in while uh, they were doing the drywall, and they were up on the stage, and the two of them that were building the house, and uh, he, the, the gentleman just said, I don't know about James. He said, this house is expensive. I, I, I just don't want to lead you on. I don't, know how you're, I don't know how it's going to work out, but I just don't want to lead you on, Brother James. This house is expensive. And it, like at that time, he didn't tell me the price or nothing like that. And uh, this was all just a faith, faith walk. And I said to him, he was sitting up on the stage, and so I was looking at him, and I just I said, my, my lilacs are going right over there. And that's all I said to him. I spoke in faith, and I said, my lilacs are going right over there. And you know what? My lilacs are right over there. Sixteen of them. (laughs) Sixteen is the number of love. I never knew that. And uh, so anyways, I said, yeah, my lilacs are going right over there. And sure enough, it came to pass. And uh, when when I think about rooted and grounded, I made sure that when I bought those plants, I I knew where I was going to put them. So I wouldn't have to dig them up and put them somewhere else. I'm thankful that Pastor Paul spoke this over me. He said, bloom where you're planted, James. Years ago, when I come to youth group, he said, just bloom where you're planted. And, uh, you know, that, that's what I did. I, I just stayed, in, stayed, in, stayed at New Covenant Ministries, bloom where I planted, just fed on the word, and just, yeah, bloom where I planted. That's a good word. Yeah. So he said that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you be rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height. And he said to know the love of Christ that passes knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. 
And verse 20, a lot of people like verse 20. I hear this all the time. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask or think according to the power that works in us. We quote that. We know that. But verse 20 always stems from 17, 18, and 19. It always stems. The God wants to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think when you know that you're loved. When you know that God loves you and you are, you are his favorite. He wants to show you his mercy, his goodness. Everything he is, he wants to show you that. He wants to do more than you can ask or think. When you know that you're loved, it's just, it just comes easy. It just, it really does. I, I just, it really does come easy. He said in verse 20, he said, Now unto him is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or think, according to the power that works in us. The power is in your believing. Just believe that you're loved. Believe that he loves you, that you're his daughter, you're his son. Right? He said, Unto him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus, world without end. Amen. Colossians. Colossians 1.27. Hallelujah. He said, to whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is what? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Everything he has and everything he wants to do uh, is through Christ in you. His power, his ability to show love and mercy. You are a vessel of love, and you are a vessel of mercy. Romans uh, 9.23. Romans 9.23. It says that he might make known what? The riches of his glory unto what? Vessels of mercy, which he had before prepared unto glory. Say this with me. I'm a vessel of love. I'm a vessel of mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, even us whom he has called, not Jews only, but also Gentiles, he's called you to the nations. He's called you to reach the people that are in your sphere of influence. You know, it, it, always, look way, always look for ways to be kind to one another, to be a blessing to one another, to bring like eternal life. Like I said, you have the very words that bring eternal life to people. You have the word of God inside you. It says in verse 25, and he says unto Osi, I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not my beloved. And it shall come to pass that in that place where it was said unto them, you are not my people. There shall be there be called the children of the living God. Isaiah also cries concerning Israel. Though the number of children, number of the children of Israel shall be the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. For he shall finish the work and cut it short in righteousness because a short work will the Lord do upon the earth. Whatever you believe in God for, he wants to do a short work, right? If you got a, if you got a loved one that you're believing for the Lord, the Bible says in Acts 16, 31, it says, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. And what? Your household. That's his promise for you, right? Your household. Anybody that's in your house, anybody that's of your, your, your kin, really, you know? And it says, even if someone that walked away from the Lord, the Bible says in Philippians 1, 6, he says, being confident of this very thing, that he which begun the good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. For years, I prayed that over Joey Hooper. Every time I would think of Joey, I'd say, thank you, Lord that I'm confident in this very, very thing, that you which begun the good work in him will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. And you know what? Came back to the Lord, and now he's on fire, and he's got himself a great woman. You know? <laughs> God is faithful. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> he said, in a short work, will the Lord make upon the earth. God wants to use you too. <laughs> Verse 33, he says, As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling of rock of offense, but whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. Romans 1.16, Thank you, Lord. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, 
For it's the power of God unto salvation, first for the Jew and then to the Greek. Right? So it's, it's um, skip over to chapter 10, verse, uh, verse 11. He said, the scripture says, whoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between a Jew or Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. He's rich unto all that call upon him. What's he rich in? Ephesians, Ephesians 2, 4. It says, but God, who is rich in mercy, for with his great love, he loved us. That's what he's rich in. Even when I read tonight, when I was doing the offering, be merciful. The Bible says in Luke 6, 36, he says, be merciful as your father in heaven is merciful. Um, so yeah, verse 13, he said, whosoever should call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And how shall they... they Call upon him who they have not believed, and how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? You and I just need to be a minister of love and mercy to one another, not only in the body of Christ, but also, you know, in our workplace. You know, wherever you work at, be a, be a blessing there, be a light there. And um, let's go to uh, Matthew. Chapter 9, talking about mercy. Matthew chapter 9. He loves you. He's got the best for you. His mercies are new each morning. Hallelujah. Even when we mess up, we just fess up. Glory to God. I'm glad Pastor Paul told me that a long time ago. He said, James, when you mess up, just fess up. And just run towards him. It says in um, chapter 9 of Matthew, uh, verse 10, it said, it came to pass, Jesus sat at meat in the house. <laughs> I can't help but think that maybe there was a brisket being smoked. <laughs> I just, he just sat at the house with meat. So, he, <laughs> so, <I can't, laughs> so anyways, the Lord confirmed that. I'm going to show you in a bit. But anyways... <laughs> There was, a, there was a smoking going on, and I believe it was a brisket, because if he, it says here, look, he says, in the house, he said, behold, many publicans and sitters came to sat down with him with his disciples. If you're going to feed someone, what are you going to make? You're going to make something big. Well, I'm pretty sure it was a brisket. A brisket's big. You know, I just did a brisket there a while back, and it took me uh, 17 and a half hours from start to finish. And I'm telling you, it was something else. But anyways, let's read on. Enough about food. <laughs> he says, and when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, why does your master eat with the publicans and sinners? But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, they that be whole need not a physician, but only they that are sick. He says, go ye and learn what this means. I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to what? Repentance. He, Hosea, go to Hosea, chapter 6. It says, it says in verse 1, he said, come, let us return. Notice that word return. He always gives you an opportunity just to turn around. If, you, if you're not right, if you're not getting it right, just turn around. He always gives you a chance to repent. What did Jesus come to do? Jesus came to preach what? The kingdom of God and repentance. He says, come and let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn and he will heal us. He has smitten and he will bind us up. After two days he will revive us and on the third day he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord his going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain and the latter rain and the former rain on the earth. Uh, turn over to Acts chapter 2 just for a minute. Keep your finger in Haggai or uh, in, your, in Hosea. He's going to do the same thing. He said the latter and the former rain. He's going to do the same thing in, uh, in these last days. Acts chapter 2. Just a quick... 
just because I want to put it in your eyes and in your ears. Acts chapter 2. Verse 17, it says, It shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. That's a promise right there for your family. Thank you, Lord, my son and my daughter are going to prophesy. Hallelujah. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And all my servants and all my headmaids I'll pour out in those days my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs of the earth beneath, blood and fire, vapor and smoke. He said, and the sun shall be turned to darkness and in the moon into blood. And before that great and notable day shall come, it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Even before the, sorry, even before the rapture, there's going to be a great pouring of God's glory. The Haggai 2.4 says, the glory of this latter house shall be what? Greater than the former. What God's going to do on this earth through you, through me, it's going to be amazing. I don't want to be a spectator like Pastor Gary saying, but be a participator. Be in the game. You know, don't forsake yourselves, uh, you know, assembling yourselves together as you see the day approaching, but all the more, all the more uh, um, gather yourselves together, right? He says in uh, verse 4 of... Uh, Hosea, he said, O Ephraim, what shall I do unto thee? O Judah, what shall I do unto thee? For your goodness is the morning cloud, and as the early dew, it goes away. Therefore, I have hooed them, hooed them by the prophets. I have slain them by my words and my mouth, and thy judgments are as light that goes forth. I desired, this is what God's saying. He said, for I desired mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. Matthew chapter 9, what did Jesus, what was Jesus doing in the house? Eating meat. It was what, a burnt offering, I believe. That's, <laughs> I believe it was. But, the more, but what I'm trying to say to you, and what God's trying to say is that he says, he, he desires mercy. He desires for you to walk in love and walk in mercy. And uh, go to uh, Matt, Luke chapter 18. Pastor has been talking about this, uh, this passage of scripture, and I just want to touch on it. Luke chapter 18. He says, He says, And two men went up to the temple to pray. He said, One a Pharisee and the other a publican. He said, The Pharisee stood and prayed with himself, God, I thank thee that I'm not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. He said, I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. But notice here, he said, and the publican standing afar off. Us as the body of Christ, we should always be watching for the people that are far off. That come in and sit in, you know, not sit in the back, but that, that kind of distance themselves. They're the people that are just, they're hungry, but they, they may be broken. They may be hurting. And it's us as the body of Christ, the body of believers that need to reach out and just be loved to them, be merciful to them, show them who, who they are in Christ, right? So always be, always be aware of who's standing afar off. He said, and the public, publican standing afar off would not lift up his eyes unto heaven, but smote his breast, saying, God, be merciful on me, a sinner. Or like the Hooper translation says, be kind unto me, for I've gotten off track. I like the Hooper translation. He says, I tell you this, that this man went down to the house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalts himself shall be abased, and everyone that humbles himself shall be exalted. James 4, 6. It says, God gives grace to what? To the humble. God resists the proud, but what? Gives grace to the humble. Notice that the Pharisee, he went in and he asked God for nothing. And in, in return, he didn't receive nothing from God. But the publican, he humbled himself. And he, and he received what, what he asked for, received mercy and reconciliation when he asked. What did he say in Hosea 4, 6? He said, O Ephraim, what shall I do for thee? O Judah, what shall I do for thee? He's just waiting for you to ask. Mark chapter, uh, Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. 
This is about uh, blind Bartimaeus. Verse 46. He says, And they came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great number of people, uh, and blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he had heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. I wonder where he got that. Maybe he went to synagogue. Maybe he went to the temple. And he must have heard, he must have heard something about David. Or he said, because he said, thou son of David, have mercy on me. The Bible says in Psalms 27, verse 7, it says, this is what David said. He said, hear me, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy on me and answer me. That's what David said. And uh, that word mercy, it means uh, hesed. Chesed, hesed, it it just means loving kindness, goodness, favor. And uh, the the law of first reference, Genesis 19, 19 says, he has magnified his mercy, saving my life. He has magnified it. It's like Pastor Paul says, he's biggie sized it. God has biggie sized his mercy towards you, saving your life. And he also says, you know, if, like I said, if you're bleeding for your loved ones, his mercies are from generation to generation, right? That's his promise. Psalm 63, verse 3, he says, I remember your loving kindness is better than life. His loving kindness, his mercy is better than life. So he said, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Verse 48, he said, he charged, and many charged him that they should hold his peace But he cried the more, a great deal, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they they called the blind man, saying unto him, be a good comfort and rise, he calls you. It says, and he, Bartimaeus, casting his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, what wilt thou that I should do unto thee? Or like he said in Hosea, "What, what do you want me to do for you? He said, and the blind man said unto him, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said unto them, go your way, your faith has made you whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Can I give you, like, uh, I'm going to read to you a different translation of um, Mark chapter 10. I don't think, I don't think they have it up on the, on the print, on the computer, but let me find it here. I wrote it down here. Okay, Mark chapter 10, starting at verse 47. He said, and this is when faith came. When he heard it was Jesus of Nazareth that went about doing good and healing all that called on him, Bartimaeus began to rehearse what he had heard about the one who heals the sick and opens the eyes of the blind. So he began to say one word after the other, thou son of David, have loving kindness towards me. He said, and the greater amount of people rebuked him and forbid him to shut up, saying, you can't talk to him like that. But then came out loud as he went crazy all the more. I have loving kindness. I have mercy. Answer me. It says, and Jesus stood still as he heard him calling on the love of God. In that moment, love spoke and addressed the words spoken spoken by Bartimaeus. And the same people that rebuked him and told him to shut up changed their tone, saying, the words you were saying over and over, cheer up, today is your day. He wants to address all that you were crowing about. It says in verse 50, he said, and that was it. He took his garment, slinging it around and tossing it far enough that he could not go back to find it. And he proceeded to go where he heard the voice of the good shepherd. It said, and Jesus addressed him, what do you desire? And please be specific. And Bartimaeus said, you are the Christ. And that I I may obtain and reap what I have believed, that my vision will be restored and renewed. And Jesus said, you can have what you say because you have believed. No one is going to take you by the hand anymore. Go your way now. The truth you received and believed has saved you, making you now to lack nothing. 
because the first time you asked for mercy is when you already had it. And now it has come to pass, and from then on, Bartimaeus accompanied himself as a disciple of Jesus, traveling the highways and the byways, and no more was he a beggar, but he went about doing what, he, what was done unto him. Everything we receive from God is meant to be poured out into others. Everything, like the vessel says, you are a vessel unto honor. You are a vessel of love. And everything that he has given you, be a blessing to people. Be kind to people. There's too much hate in this world and anger in this world. Be the love of God to people. Like John 6, 63, thank you, Lord. I thank you that New Covenant Ministries Church, their words are life and their spirit. That whoever they meet, they bring the love of God to people. Thank you, Lord. They bring the gospel, the good news. Hallelujah. God loves you, and I love you. And I just wanted to say that, you know, that God, he is merciful. Our God is merciful. Our God is love. And I just thank you for letting me, letting me share that with you tonight. And I just uh, I say that bless you, and thank you for coming out. We hope this message has encouraged you in your relationship with the Lord. For more information and ministry resources, we invite you to visit our website at www.newcovenantchurch.ca. We look forward to you joining us next time as we continue to live victoriously.